about half of the world's population for two weeks a month and about 20% of the world's population chronically have difficulty with sleep. Insomnia itself, we see on the cerebral cortex by um, surface EEGs. Historically, EEGs have been looked at in seven frequency ranges, but with our sensors and with our technology, we can see that same pattern with, instead of seven frequency ranges, 48,000 frequency ranges. So looking at it in that kind of a granular way has helped us discern where uh, asymmetry exists in brain, functional brain patterns. When Im an imbalance is found, the technologist places sensors back on the scalp in those areas based on instructions from the computer. And then the computer begins to exchange a musical note for a dominant frequency of the brain in order to set up a resonance loop. So the brain says here, the computer goes, you know, middle C or whatever, plays that back to the person, and a resonance loop is set up, like two tuning forks, this one being the brain and this one being the computer, and that allows imbalances to be removed, and then that allows an opportunity for the brain to function. The Wake Forest School of Medicine clinical trial on insomnia showed that for the test group, all of the test group who were in the moderate to severe area of insomnia based on the, um, the insomnia sleep index, all of those clients after the intervention were under the threshold of insomnia. In other words, all of those clients had no longer had insomnia. Six weeks later, what Wake Forest learned was they were even sleeping better than they were directly after the intervention, which tells them uh, that there's a strong likelihood that there is very little placebo effect, that the asymmetries that they saw and that were removed with brainwave optimization and seem to lead to a healthy and restful sleep patterns for those individuals. Exciting stuff for about 50% of the population of the planet.